there's something going on actually right now. And I wonder why African governments are doing it very nothing against it. This is something that might seem trivial to some, but it's actually what we the Africans call slow poison. That is, it's a killer in the long term. I'm obviously talking here about TikTok. Or doing in China. Yes, if you didn't know, there are actually two TikToks. The Chinese TikTok and the TikTok we, the other people, according to them, use. We, the worthy of trash, use. Okay? The Chinese have this first version of TikTok that was created called the Duin. And we are using the second version called TikTok. Both apps are actually designed to be addictive. But the difference between the Chinese government and us is that the Chinese government actually regulates what their citizens watch, contrary to our governments who does literally nothing. We are just that trash where everything can be thrown, especially we here in Africa. I'm mostly focusing on Africa because other countries have started taking measures. We have Afghanistan that completely banned TikTok already. We have India that has equally done something about it. And recently, you guys saw what the US is doing about it. The US is not taking it lightly. Yo. Though some people are claiming that it's more political and everything. I don't want to get into that. But we can agree here that at least the US is doing something about that. The US government went an extra mile to bring the TikTok CEO for questioning. Though it's a very controversial something. But I still congratulate the idea after everything. According to Edith Bro, an Ivorian blogger, TikTok is not a bad app but it just depends on how you use it it depends on your personal discipline yeah i agree with her on that but at the same time i believe the government is responsible for doing its best to protect its citizens we the parents we have the responsibility to control what our kids watch as well but at the same time with the support of a body like the government it becomes much more easier and that's where the Chinese government is doing something great and tricking us. In China, for example, children less than 14 years of age are denied access to TikTok as from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And they are allowed only 45 minutes of watch time per day. So that's what the government on its own is doing before maybe the parental control at home. Because the trick behind TikTok is that people just look at the convenience of the short videos. You know, people like to hurry in, like people don't like to waste time. But what they forget in turn is that in the long run, it becomes very time consuming than the long videos on YouTube, for example. The TikTok is very, very addictive. The TikTok algorithm is set in a way that once you turn on the app, you start scrolling and what you see is always or most times what will interest you. So you keep scrolling and for you, they are short videos, but you finally end up watching more videos and consequently spending hours and hours on TikTok without even noticing. TikTok is actually a tool of massive destruction. And I wish our African government could really do something about this because the craziest youths on TikTok are actually the African youths. From the dangerous challenges to the dangerous trends to the horrible pranks and you name it. On the Chinese TikTok that is the doing, it's based on education, art, and technology. The Chinese people are always doing something important or positive. When I watch Chinese videos, I see things like technological innovations, new techniques that could better your life, DIYs, maybe ninja fruit cutting, intellectual mathematics solving, and all the like. So they are always doing something positive, and that's what they are showing their own youths. But we in Africa and the Western countries, what do we see on TikTok? When you log into TikTok, most things you're going to see are girls twerking. That's the top of the feed on most TikToks in Africa and the Western countries. Girls twerking, showing their breasts and everything, showing how skillful they are at the level of dancing. And what? It's true, it makes us laugh. Laugh so hard that we forget about the dangers of it. We laugh and encourage those kids to do dangerous pranks dangerous challenges and stupid jokes in the name of comedy. While the Chinese youths are there learning things that could better their lives, African youths and the Western youths are here learning how to become influencers because that's, that's a trending thing right now. When you ask an African youth what they want to be in future, they will most likely tell you that they want to be influencers. And by influencers for them, they mean, especially for girls, shaking their bum bum on social media and attracting admirers who they claim to influence. That's what the African youths have been reduced to. 
But if you ask the Chinese youth what they would like to be in the future, they'll most likely tell you that we love to be an astronaut, a doctor, an architect, and so on and so forth. Just because of what they see on social media. You guys know social media is a very strong tool and it has a way of tuning someone's mind to think or perceive life in a certain way. That's why in my home, I constantly filter what my kids watch. I constantly select what my kids watch on TV. There's this cartoon that I recently discovered that's not good for kids and that unfortunately my kids have been watching and they love it so much. It's this paper pick, paper pick cartoon. My kids love it so much, but, but I got to discover that they are showing certain things there that are, to me, immoral for my kids. And I've limited my kids' watch time on TV already. I've been doing that for over a year now. My kids don't watch TV for more than two hours a day. And they have a particular time of doing that. I'm even thinking of completely stopping TV in my home. I'm eventually going to make sure everyone has their tablet and no TV in my home. So that I am sure my kids watch only what I've uploaded for them to watch. And I can actually be sure that my kids don't watch what I don't want them to watch. <clears throat> Whether we like it or not, what we constantly watch, even with the adults, consciously or not, gradually affects our mindset. That's why there are certain results in society that you just can't blame the children because it's a result of what they watch and what they keep seeing around them every day. There's this saying in French that le comportement est fonction d'environnement, meaning that you are what your environment molds you to be. That's why if you show a triangle to a kid in China, that kid would likely talk of hypotenuse or something. But if you show that same triangle to a kid in Africa or in the Western countries, that kid is likely to talk about Illuminati. I know some of you are going to be thinking that, why am I saying that? TikTok is just an app like any other app. Yeah, it is an app like any other app. Yeah, I agree. But one thing we should understand is that the Chinese made the TikTok algorithm with some sort of not so good intention, for me not to use the word bad intentions. The TikTok algorithm is not so different from the YouTube algorithm. If you download the TikTok app and log into TikTok for the first time, they are going to propose things to you based on your geographic location. So if you are in Africa, they are most likely to propose to you videos from Africans. So look at what are being proposed to we here in Africa. We mostly see girls dancing, twerking, showing what they've got to the world and everything. That's what we mostly see. Whether we like it or not, that's most likely what you're going to see in Africa when you log into your TikTok. So that has nothing to do with what you've searched on TikTok, like some of you might be thinking right now. I know some of you will say, you know, they show you things based on your search history. No, I'm talking here about a case of someone who just downloaded the app for the first time and is about logging in for the first time. You are going to be shown things from your area. So what does TikTok send to you? TikTok sends to you the videos made by your peers in your geography location you guys can see how poisonous tiktok is to the african youth because the african youth are becoming something tiktok our youths are literally crazy about tiktok if you guys remember especially in the west we had dangerous challenges going on that the kids were embarking on stupid pranks like the drinking of salt the fire challenge and the back cracking challenge some stupid things that you don't know where those kids get their ideas from but that's what they enjoy doing because when they do that, we keep watching and giving them the views. They feel it's good. And since they have the dream of becoming influencers and what they think is going to make them influencers is the numbers, the views and the subscriber count. So when we watch those things, we keep encouraging them to do more and more and more. So that gets them doing more and more dangerous challenges because the more the risk, the more the views, the more the subscribers and the more they draw closer to their crazy dream of becoming influencers. I'm going to be honest here. To me, TikTok is the most irresponsible app ever. It completely lacks moderation. There's no moderation on TikTok. Facebook is closer to that. Instagram is better, but YouTube is something else. And that's why I love the YouTube app so much. And I really applaud them for this. YouTube is so responsible. YouTube is so censored, so filtered. You just can't come and dump anything on YouTube because you know you stand the chances of your video being taken down or your channel as a whole being taken down. So it limits the amount of crazy things that you could do on the app. And that's why I blame an app like TikTok that lets kids do everything they want, anything they want, without any moderation. The TikTok CEO has a right to do what he likes with his app, but at the same time, just some little moderation would help and save lives. Do you know that some kids have actually lost their lives on TikTok just because of some crazy challenges they embark on? 
I remember watching a certain guy who lost his life just like that because he was so excited to get his parachuting filmed that he jumped forgetting to wear his parachute back so there was no parachute for him to open when there was time to open and that's how he lost his life just because he was so obsessed with the filming part of the challenge so to me tiktok is not a good app at all because on there our youth safety is actually at stake and i've seen places where people say that they learn on tiktok yeah you learn on tiktok but one thing you should know is that tiktok is mostly a distraction app okay it's true you might learn one or two things on TikTok, but not accurately. Let's be honest here. How much can you learn in less than three minutes? Yes. Though they've extended to about 10 minutes right now, but the app gained its popularity due to the fact that it had short videos and people prefer watching short videos. In less than three minutes, you can get distracted, laugh, and enjoy something. But to actually learn something important, you can't really do that in three minutes. And that's why most videos that are educative on TikTok actually have their continuation on YouTube. They would likely write there that follow me on YouTube for more or come to YouTube for the full video because the big deal is actually done on YouTube. YouTube is actually that app that when someone wants to be educated or when someone wants to learn something, someone goes to. And that comes back to one of the reasons why I love YouTube so much. Don't be fooled by the shorter form of TikTok, which is what actually makes TikTok to be addictive. The videos are so short that you get comfortable watching short videos and just for entertainment. And in the long run, it actually destroys you and you are not aware of it at all. What it does is that it actually reduces your concentration span so much so that you can't stand watching a video that's maybe five minutes or so. You're going to find it so long. And that's going to affect you even in real life out of TikTok you're going to have a shorter concentration span, which is not good for you, especially if you are a student. And you guys know the most active people on TikTok are actually the youth who are still students. So imagine how their studies could be affected. I intentionally choose what I consume on social media. So what I would advise you to do is to intentionally choose who you follow on social media, be it on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and even YouTube. Be intentional about who you follow. Choose wisely who you follow because when you follow someone in the long run, whether you like it or not, what you keep consuming from that person indirectly affects your life in a certain way. Like I said earlier on, YouTube is so far the best social media app for me and that's why the only app that I constantly log into is YouTube because on there I learn a lot and I'm so sure that I can just fall on something so stupid, something immoral, something uncensored, something graphic and I at least have this assurance that my sanity is protected. There are moments that I literally uninstall TikTok and Facebook from my phone. As I'm talking to you right now, I've been off Facebook for over two months and for TikTok, I've been off for over a month and I just locked in back a few days ago. I will just conclude this video by saying that TikTok on its own, to me, is not a really good app. If only the TikTok CEO could at least filter what is shown to the audience, it would have been better and it would have been one of the best apps. But just for that, to me, it's not a good app. Please, I'm quite aware that lots of you are going to disagree with what I'm saying right now. But maybe in the long run, you guys are going to understand how destructive this app is to our African youths. And that's why I would plead with the African governments to try and do something about it. What do you expect from youths who have been fed with lots of toxicity that they enjoy so much? But while waiting for our government to do something, I would urge our parents, I would urge we the parents to do something about it when it comes to our kids. Though I haven't understood up till now why a kid less than 15 years old would be given an Android phone and let alone to use it the way they want. Worst of all, given the permission to have a TikTok account and do whatever they want there and literally watching whatever they want to watch. And parents actually saying nothing wrong with that. So I would just plead with the parents to on our own part begin by controlling what our kids are watching on social media and on TV as well. That said, thanks for watching this video and hope to see you on my next one.